Welcome. How are you? Good, good. It's good to be here. Yes. So, um, we are very happy to bring all of you here to um, a very dear Armenian family that has known the consecrated women and the legionaries over at Notre Dame of Jerusalem Center for a long time. Yes. And this is actually their beautiful shop, their ceramic shop. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves and they're going to help us understand more about the Christian presence here, their Christian presence, the Christian presence of the Armenians here in Jerusalem. And I'm just gonna start with this really important point. The Armenians were the first country to convert as a country, as a people, to Christianity. And I think it's not only a point of pride for all of you, but it's, it's just something that we should all be very aware of in terms of our own Christian history. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your shop and your family. So my name is Habib Karakashian, and I'm the third generation in my family doing this kind of art. It's beautiful. Yes, I learned it from my father, who learned it from his father. So it all starts in 1919. Mm. Come this way and I'll explain it better. Now, 1919, it's the British mandate in Palestine. Uh -huh. The governor, Sir Ronald Storrs, wants to repair all the ceramic tiles covering the Dome of the Rock. These were last done in the 16th century. They were falling apart. Now, to do the job, he invites uh, an Armenian ceramic artist by the name of David Ohanesian from Kutaya in Turkey to come to Jerusalem and study the project. Oh. Now, David Ohanesian comes and sees that he needs to replace 48,000 tiles. 48,000? Hand-painted tiles oh, on goodness. this monument. He cannot do it alone, so he goes back to Kutaya, Turkey and makes a team of artists. One of the artists was my grandfather, the painter, Madridich Karakashian, and the other artist was Nishan Balyan, who was the potter, the one making the tiles. Now, they're happy to leave Turkey because of the Armenian genocide. Right. They come to Jerusalem. There's an old kiln. There was an old kiln next to the Dome of the Rock. They repair it and start making the sample tiles in it. Right at the site. Yes, on site. That's so uh, the British approve of the samples. But the local Muslims say, we don't really want Armenian Christians to work on one of the holiest sites of Islam. Interesting. So they cancel the project. Now, the three artists, they cannot go back to Turkey, but uh, to make a living, they stay in Jerusalem and open the first Armenian pottery in 1920. Really? It was located on the Via Dolorosa. And that's how this art is introduced into Jerusalem. Goodness. Yes, not many people know no, that No, in fact, happened. you can see, I think when most people think of Armenians in Jerusalem, the first thing that comes to mind are ceramics. I mean, there's yes. Armenian ceramic everywhere. So that's how it started. Oh my goodness. Now we come to the second generation, my father. He, uh, during the Jordanians in Jerusalem in 1966, mm -hmm. they because commissioned... I, just to remind people, mm -hmm. Uh, Jordan was actually control, in control of Jerusalem for years, for decades, yes, right? Yes, since 1948 when the English left. Mm -hmm. So they want to make street signs. They commissioned my father to make street signs on ceramic tiles in Arabic and English. This is actually in front of the fifth station, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And this is the ceremony, the day when they put them up. Mm -hmm. I was my father. Oh my and God. the mayor of Jerusalem back then, the Jordanian mayor. Mm -hmm. Now, 67, the Israelis come and they say to my father, we like what you did with the signs, but please add our Hebrew language. So the Hebrew is added after 67. Wow, so if you look closely, you can see that there was an addition. Yes. I've never realized When you realized visit Jerusalem, that. you'll be able to see these different periods. So these are actually um, small models of the yes. street signs that are yes, still there. Yes, you can yes. still see them. They're still there. Yes. They're still everywhere in the old city. Yep. <gasps> That's amazing. So when I come to work every day, I look up at the walls. I see my father's work. It's very emotional, impressive. Mm -hmm. I feel like a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jerusalem is your place, it's your city. Yes. That's a wonderful yes. thing.
Well, also, when we were um, filming in the Armenian Church of St. James, yes. which is in the Armenian quarter, there's an entire quarter of the city. Yes. I suppose that means that there were quite a few Armenians that uh, came Since into Since the Jerusalem. fourth century, because they were the first nation, as a nation, to accept Christianity officially. Yes. So pilgrims came and the community grew over the centuries. Wow. Yeah. Well, inside the Church of St. James, which is important because of James, and they have a place where um, I believe he was martyred there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have his relics, perhaps some of his relics. I think so, yes. And on the inside of the church, there are some um, beautiful ceramics. And so Blue that's and white that. ceramic tiles. Yes. Uh, mostly, I think, from the 18th century, because pilgrims came from Armenia to Jerusalem, and they brought gifts of these tiles. That's beautiful. And the whole inside is covered. The walls are covered with, with these blue and white tiles. Mm -hmm. As you go out of the church, the facade was tiled by my grandfather. This is in the 1950s. Oh my goodness. What's special about this art is that it only exists in Jerusalem. This is where it started and oh. this is where it continues. Oh my goodness. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So this is a very, very uh, Jerusalem. Uniquely Jerusalem, Uniquely yes. Uniquely Jerusalem, I So if you want to see it, you have to come here. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, why don't you show us a little bit of uh, yes, your workshop? Yes, please come inside. Great. This is lovely. We see the studio and you meet my wife. Hi. Hi. Who, Very nice to meet you. Who helped me set up this uh, studio and we work together. Yeah. So were you working in ceramics before you met your husband? Uh, on and off. I used to like ceramics and I, um, I've been working some places. She used to work for the competition. <laughs> oh, did she? <laughs> That's why you married her. Now I understand. Right. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, workshop here? It looks, this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh yeah. my gosh. Now, these all are before firing them. Okay. Before firing, because oh. they are oxide colors, you see that they are different colors. Yes. Uh, like uh, the yellow here. I'll show you this one. Maybe this will help. Like this green becomes this green. Oh, I see. The blue is this blue. Oh, and then where do we have a red? I have a red. Yeah. Oh, this isn't red. That's yes, these are red, of course. Uh, these are the reds. Now um, you have the purple. The purple is this blue. Oh my gosh, it's lovely. Yeah, they change color so after. So you have to learn. Yes. 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 Yeah, you learn slowly. Certainly. And uh, because they are oxide colors, after you put the glaze on top, that's where they change color. And so you have your own kiln, kiln here? Everything um, is here. Now what we do normally is we draw. Some of the drawings are uh, freehand drawings and mm -hmm. some of them we have a special paper which we... It's stencil. Beautiful. <laughs> so this is actually one of my grandfather's stencils. Oh my gosh! It's very old. Kidding? It's from the 1950s. <gasps> the design is drawn with pencil okay. and then what we do is we make pinholes oh my gosh, that's using a, a lot pen of by hand. Work. Yes, many days oh, of yes. work. It needs a lot of um, patience. patience. So yeah. why the pinholes? The pinholes is so that we can transfer the design to a tile. No, that's the charcoal. This is charcoal. Now the dust goes through the holes. Okay. <gasps> it leaves the design on that's the tile. So cool. And then we start painting the black line. paint. Oh. Paint it with paint directly. The black yes, paint directly. yes, and then we fill in the colors like here, and then it's glazed and fired. This is amazing. Yes, <laughs> just one thing in the market. If you uh, visit the uh, old city market yes. today, you'll see a lot of uh, a tons of ceramic. Yeah. Yes, they are all mass produced in Hebron. They call it Armenian, but it has nothing to do with Armenian. They yes, are just cheap uh, imitations. Right, what right. my grandfather and father used to do. Yeah. So do you actually do online stuff? This is just a very practical yes, question for us. Yes, we have a website and people order. Oh, wonderful. Mainly from English-speaking countries. The oh. U.S., Canada, the U.K., Australia sometimes. Oh, that's really neat. Yes, oh, very yes. nice. So if I could ask uh, Zorik and Jakob to 
recite for us the uh, Our Father in Armenian, one of the languages that we hear in Jerusalem that has history here in Jerusalem. Okay. All right. Start. Yes. Hayrmer horar ginses sup yaretsin anko yeges tsar kaychunko yeretsin ganko or beser ginas evervi sats mer hanamazor tu mezay sor yev to mez vadis mer or beser mengtonk mer ospar davanad yev midan yeriz mez potchun al pergaz mez charen zikar kaychun ezolchun yev par kardian saldeints amen amen wow thank you very much it almost sounds like a combination it's certainly a unique language. It is. Mm. Yes, it's a unique language. Wonderful. Well, they say that you know, Armenian is the language of God. That's, That's what they say. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, you're Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.